Hello, welcome. This is Jared Rasher. I have the What Do I Know Games and Geekdom blog, and I also have the What Do I Know About Actual Play series of videos on YouTube. Initially, I was planning on trying to record a video for each tier of play in Shadow of the Demon Lord, which, if you're not familiar with the system, there's beginning characters, there's novice tier, there's expert tier, and there's master's tier, which is where the levels are grouped and you have different options for different characters. And I was going to try and hit each of those tiers and give kind of an overview of how I think that went and problems that I might have had and experiences that I might have had in running those various things. And life happened, and while I've been running the game and having a lot of fun running the game, I haven't had as much of a chance to stop and record some of my thoughts on those individual tiers and how the adventures went. So what we're going to get here now is I'm going to sum up the things that happened in the novice tier and observations that I had there. And most of what I've gotten from the expert tier, because we have about one more adventure that I'm going to run in the expert tier before we move into the master tier, which is kind of the end game of the entire campaign. So what I've been trying to do is to get as much of a core experience as determined by the books as I possibly can. So I did. I, I read through the chapter where they're talking about the kind of expectations that you would have for different uh, tier adventures. Novice tier adventures are a little bit more set piece. They're a little bit more, hey, I'm presenting you with something. Would you like to do this? Um, they're a little bit more traditional. This is a thing that is happening near you and you can investigate it and you might get money and riches and find some things that might help you out and make the world a better place. Um, the, the assumption with the novice tier adventures is, um, it, the feeling that I get from reading that section of the book, and I could have totally misinterpreted this, but the feeling I get is that novice tier is a little bit more linear. You're expected to have things presented to you a little bit more than grabbing the narrative by the tail and pulling it in one direction or another, which is not to say, and this is a whole other thing, this is far beyond my ability to expound upon this, but I mean, it goes into the whole difference between railroad and linear. To me, linear, you still have a lot of different ways you can solve a problem, but there's still a relatively limited set among what you're expecting to do. Um, so I set up the novice tier adventures a little bit more in that thought process, where they had essentially an NPC that was working with them and asking them to investigate things. They had a relationship with this person from the opening adventure when they were still zero level, and even if they didn't do exactly what this NPC wanted them to do, even if they pursued their own agendas on the side, a lot of that was being driven by that NPC presenting them with information, them deciding how much or how little they wanted to follow up on what that NPC was presenting them with. Um, I think this went fairly well for most of it. The very last adventure that I came up with for Novice Tier, they kind of went off on a trip and that one felt far more linear than the other adventures that I ran, where it was just sort of like, hey, your adventure is to go to this spot and experience things between here and there. And I wasn't really happy with how I had presented it. Um, I'm, I gave them lots of interesting choices and things that they could do in the other adventures. And, and what was really interesting is in one of the adventures, Foreshadow of the Demon Lord, because they were very cautious and they had very specific plans, they managed to almost entirely avoid combat for one of their novice tier adventures, which I thought was really interesting because it wasn't so much that they ran from anything, it was just that they made some really interesting choices and they planned out and thought about what they were planning on doing. So that entire adventure there wasn't a there was a lot of physical threat that could happen if they had not planned things out the way they did but they managed to avoid almost all of it in the manner in which they approached the adventure which i thought was really interesting and it, it was really kind of fascinating to see them take what i thought could have been an adventure where it was like oh well they'll probably have this combat encounter they could have these if they're not careful they might trip these traps instead of that there was a lot of discussion among the groups and delegating different roles to people, and it was really interesting. But I felt like I, I, I presented a bit of a flat adventure for their last novice tier adventure because a lot of it was really, hey, go to this place and the adventure will happen to you. And the choices you make are basically, hey, 
have I decided whether or not I want to die or not? Or will I just keep going in this direction? <laughs> I don't know any other way to really explain it. I, I wasn't thrilled with it. It was really just a go in this direction. Here's a thing that will help you go in that direction. That was, I think most of the novice tier went okay. And when I say I think it went okay, I mean, I think the players enjoyed themselves. And I think I did my usual mediocre job of running the game. What I mean when I don't think the last part of Novice Tier worked was I presented a, I, I did my normal mediocre job with a super overly cliched ultra linear thing. And I think the players didn't not enjoy it, but they showed up. <laughs> and because the rest of the adventures went well, they tolerated that one to get to the other ones. And um, so there was that. The other thing I did in Novice Cheer was in between each one, we were assuming that about a month had passed in between each adventure, so we were using the downtime rules, so we were kind of seeing what events happened to people in between. I think it was fun. I don't think a lot happened because of the downtime rules, but I think it helped reinforce that they were doing other things than just adventuring. Um, it, it got me to think a little bit more about how I necessarily want to present downtime rules if I use them later on. Um, and I'm planning on doing it again because I'm planning for another time jump in between the expert tier and the master tier. Um, but it helped me to clarify some of the things that I was a little more nebulous on when I was thinking about how to present those, uh, those downtime rules. So overall, I think novice tier went okay. I think people went well, and I hope that I get some, some feedback from people I'm planning on at the end of the series to have an interview with people to find out specifically what they liked and what they didn't like about the campaign. But it seemed like novice tier went pretty okay, other than the fact that I forget rules and I don't have some of the basic things memorized that I really should have memorized, but that's, that's me. I've always kind of seen myself as a mediocre GM. I can handle it. I, I can do a decent job. I'm providing value in that if I weren't running the game, someone wouldn't be running this particular game for players to play in. And I'm not doing a bad job, but there are so many people so much better than me. And sometimes the weight of that kind of gets on me. I, there, there's people out there that are just brilliant, absolutely brilliant GMs. Either they can super plan all sorts of options and present amazing maps and, and dioramas in, in real time, or they do a great job presenting things online. I basically say, hey, I, I am hoping that if you like these rules, I am using these rules and that you are appreciating how I use these rules, but I probably am not doing it in a brilliant or in a, an amazing manner, but you recognize that you are playing this game. And you are having fun doing it. And that's what I'm really hoping that I'm I'm zeroing in on when I run a game. So when we get to expert tier, I want to do something different. Because even in the book, it talks about how expert tier is really when people are kind of coming into their own. You're moving into the wider world and how your characters fit into the big picture. Um, we haven't quite got to the end game where the world may end and you may save it yet, but we are getting to the point to where you're starting to realize some of the dire realities of what's really going on in the setting. So the way I process the expert tier, there's a year gap between the novice tier and the expert tier. So while everyone was off separately, I kind of, in the, uh, in the group that I have set up online, just kind of said, hey, what would you guys be doing after this event for this year? And once I had an idea of what they were doing for that year, I gave them clues based on what each of those characters would have been doing in the year and basically let them follow up on those clues throughout the expert tier. And I'm using the expert tier as essentially a timer. So every session we play, they level up. Once they hit seventh level and they are ready for the master tier, we're going to have another time jump and major things will happen in the campaign. And the reason that there's a timer here is that if they find out about certain things, some bad things may not happen. If they deal with certain things, some bad things may not happen. Anything they haven't dealt with is going to contribute to what happens next as things escalate in the campaign. So it's very player driven. I presented them with a lot of different things that are in motion in the campaign and what they've chosen to deal with are going to be the things that resolve based on how they have dealt with them and the things they haven't touched at all are going to be things that completely unfold without them having touched them. And um, 
and they they literally have until they hit that um till they hit seventh level before things just kind of go how they're going to go and we move into the end game and see how they either save the world don't care about the world or throw in with whoever uh, and um, I, I kind of like that as a timing mechanism. I have thought about how, um, especially with some of the earlier adventures I was running, um, I think if I were to run this again, instead of literally saying I'm going to do 11 sessions, I would clarify and say 11 adventures, so that when we feel like we have a specific ending point, that that's the end of the adventure and that's when we advance instead of just saying we have a hard end this is when this, this stops because we've been running about three hour long sessions and sometimes i feel like if we were either playing four hours or if we were saying these two sessions counted as one I, we would be getting a little bit better experience to how the game is supposed to be paced but at the same time i think as all of us have been getting a little bit more used to the rules including me we've been getting a lot more done in a session so i haven't been feeling like this is as much of an issue as we move further into the expert tier but i think I, if i were to run this again i would be saying 11 adventures instead of 11 sessions uh because trying to make both of those mean the same thing has been a little challenging sometimes and other times it hasn't been quite as bad um, but that's been definitely one of the things that i have learned from running the game um I did specifically the way I've been doing this because I wanted player input and I wanted to take time to take the things they followed up on in the novice tier and the things they found out that were optional that they may have found out about or not found out about in the novice tier and incorporate that into how the world changed. I took a week off in between the novice tier and the expert tier so that I could plan out multiple directions that they could go in the expert tier and incorporate those things into it and i'm also going to be taking another week off so that i can play in the master tier like this and the thing is i've been improvising and throwing things in that make sense when they come up but i have also been just adding detail that i didn't necessarily throw into the outline that i did in that off week but this makes sense for it to be a little bit more detailed so that i have an idea if they go off in a direction and I can run it, but at the same time as I get more ideas to flesh that, that direction out, I have been doing that as well. Um, I think, and the other thing that's been flavoring this whole thing is, in Shadow of the Demon Lord, there is this thing, there, there is basically a mechanic called the Shadow of the Demon Lord, which is kind of showing you what flavor of apocalypse you have coming. Like, you could have... One of the one of the options is that the fey creatures are all starting to go crazy, and the master of the wild hunt is the harbor, harbinger of uh, of the world ending. And so, at novice tier, fairy creatures start doing this, and expert tier fairy creatures start doing this, and in master tier, this is how the big confrontation kind of unfolds. So you pick one of those templates to kind of flavor how your apocalypse is going. Um, I kind of took the default easy one, which is basically the collapse of, of society as kind of the flavor of things. As as things get worse and society starts getting more and more messed up and there's more and more wars and more and more civilized countries and cities start disappearing, that's the, the, the herald of uh, the world ending. And then I added an additional frame on top of that. So that's been kind of the lens through which we are viewing the apocalypse this time around. And I've been really enjoying that. Um, I have, I've been getting more comfortable with the system. Reading through it, I thought I understood it. Um, running zero-level adventures at conventions, I thought I understood it. And there's still things that slip by me that, no matter how well you read rules, I think there are certain things you just don't get better at doing until you overrun it for a while. And I think I'm starting to get better at those things, but there's still basic things that I hate that I've been missing here and there. Um... But overall, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable running it and improvising things on the fly when things change at the last minute. And I've been enjoying it quite a bit. I hope the players are enjoying it. But at this point, this has definitely been a positive experience running this game. Um, nothing in running the game has told me that my initial impressions of liking the game were wrong. I really like the setting the more I get into it and I've had some really good players and I've been getting some really good play experiences in the games. So where we're at right now, very happy. I would be happy to run this again in the future. 
it's probably not going to be the next thing that I run on YouTube before my Saturday morning games, just because my goal for this year specifically is to get in, play with game systems that I haven't gotten a chance to experience broadly before. I had played zero level games at conventions. I've run zero level games at conventions before, but I wanted to run a whole campaign of Shadow of the Demon Lord since I had invested in the game so heavily. So that's really what I'm doing here and getting a chance to feel the ex in the entire experience. I would happily come back and run the game again. It's just probably not going to be the next thing that I do back to back with this. I'm going to be looking for something else to run just so that I can feel like I'm moving through a lot more of my backlog of games that I haven't played before. But as an overall positive experience, I definitely would love to run this game again. I'd love to play in somebody else's game of this. And I'm hoping the players are having a positive experience too. But like I said, I'll be doing interviews with my players when we get to the end of the entire uh, campaign. But this is just my kind of snapshot of where I feel we're at going into the expert tier. I felt I I ended the, the, the novice tier on a low note, and it was not one of the best adventures I had ever come up with. I think the expert tier has been going pretty well, with the overall caveat that I'm not a great GM, but I think they've been solid, enjoyable sessions, if not the most mind-blowing, amazing games that anybody's ever played. So with that in mind, um, thank you for watching, and I hope you're watching some of the videos online. I know they're long, and they're three-hour-long sessions, and I don't have the skills to really edit those, so yes, they are just three-hour-long, actually, how we play games. But if you watch them, I really appreciate it. If you're watching this, I appreciate it, and thank you very much.